Hey everybody, it's Miss Villegas on the mic. Uh, Alright, so yesterday we did a little um, process that showed some different aspects of capitalism and communism and socialism. And I'm going to briefly go through some of the notes that shows where it's coming from. So here we have laissez-faire economics started by a man called Adam Smith. And Adam Smith was actually categorized as an enlightened philosoph, not because he questioned necessarily politics, but he questioned politics and economics and the role that each of them played entangled together as one. And prior to all these Atlantic revolutions, we did see these monarchs, these absolute monarchs that controlled not only social aspects of life and political aspects of life, but also economic aspects of life. They decided the rate of exchange. They decided trade and what relationships their country was going to have with other countries based on trade. And Adam Smith says, why? Why do we need one person or even just a, a group of bureaucrats deciding how we trade and what we do with our resources? So he wrote a book. It's called The Wealth of Nations. A very famous book. You need to know it for U.S. history. You need to know it for global excuse me, and AP Euro. And basically within this text, he talks about laissez-faire economics, a free market economy. And you've been taught to believe that it's when the government has hands off of business. But it's so much more than that. That's the, that's the root of it, where, you know, basically everything's regulated by other characteristics, but it's essentially the government does not have any hand in the means of production. So, it kind of naturally happens. Capitalism and Adam Smith's theory of the free market system goes hand in hand, and it, and it comes naturally when the Industrial Revolution is happening. And one of the components of capitalism, well, actually, capitalism is based on three things. Waged labor, right, working for a wage. Private ownership of the means of production. Things like factories, machinery, farms, offices, right? And then the production of exchange and profit. So you pay for what you get. So some people actually have capital at the time, their own means of production. But most of us don't. So we still survive, but we don't have this large scale business or process happening. But we still get paid for doing a particular skill or job. Anyway, uh, big concept is the concept of supply and demand. Again, this is very basic stuff. So how much you have of something determines its value and then could also determine the price and how much people want of it. So if I have a classroom of 30 freshmen and I've got five Jolly Ranchers and I throw them in the air, things are going to go crazy. If I've got 300 Jolly Ranchers and 30 kids and I throw them in the air, people might not be so quick to try to scramble to get a Jolly Rancher, right? So supply and demand dictate, dictate the price of things in a given area. Most recently in, in our country, video games have been a part of this trend. People wait online outside of the store, you know, overnight just so they can pick up one of the five Nintendo systems that they came out with. My husband was one of them. But this is how it works. And sometimes there's fighting and arguments that happen. Some people don't get the item, whereas some people do. So again, supply and demand is a big part of capitalism. So just remember that Adam Smith is the father of modern capitalism, and he discusses the importance of the division of labor, and free trade. So the government does not intervene with certain movements that happen. So laissez-faire comes from the French term of let it be. Right? So um, the outcome for society in this type of a thing, we're going to see that the government is going to not play a role, but there will be, so to speak, winners and losers. And here are the problems with capitalism. So sometimes the gap between the rich and the poor 
gets larger and you see that the wealthiest of people gain and, and benefit from this, whereas everyone else is pretty much exploited and, uh, you know, suffer in, in certain regards of life. One more thing before we move on. Some of you might be asking, well, what's the big deal? Why can't government play a role in regulating trade or exchange to make things fairer? Adam Smith argued that if we use the government to intervene in the economics of a given community or country, that it becomes inefficient. Uh, things get lost in translation, there's too much conversation, things don't happen as quickly, uh, and there's no freedom or liberty in it. So when you look at socialism or communism, the drawback for that is that it doesn't really emphasize individuality free choice, and a lot of the time everybody may get something, but it's at a minimum. And speaking of socialism, here it is. A lot of the time socialism and capitalism are seen as opposing schools of thought. Uh, the main debate is over equality and what the role of government actually is. Socialists, of course, believe that inequality economically is bad for society and the government should be responsible for reducing the inequality with programs that could benefit the poor, like free public education or free health care or social security for the elderly, higher taxes on the rich. So and, and we see some of these in our in our society today, and we elect politicians that swing the pendulum of how radical we enact laws to support those things. When we look at capitalism in its true form, they believe that the government shouldn't use any resources to help. So private enterprise should have certain enactments that help society become better off or that it's naturally there due to capitalism. So if we're looking at our day and age, the US, you know, United States, we're widely considered the defender of capitalism. Whereas if you look at other parts of the world, places like Scandinavia, uh, some some places in Western Europe, they're they're known as socialist democracies. And I mean, believe it or not, you, if you look at our government, we do have parts that are socialist, uh, but nobody ever likes to admit it because they feel shame in creating programs that may help certain groups that are not well off as others. Okay, so that, so basically when we look at socialism, we're talking about the means of production, money, capital, it's all owned by the state. Um, or just in general, it's, it's public, right? So under this kind of a system, everyone works for wealth, and in turn, it's distributed to everyone, and the government pretty much has a hand in regulating that. Under capitalism, you work for your own wealth. So the premise behind socialism is that everyone operates as far as what is good for one is good for all. In capitalism, you're competitively driven. Now, we go to communism super fast. This guy, Karl Marx, comes up with it, and his, his book is The Communist Manifesto. And he says, listen, there's two kinds of people. You got the haves, which are the educated, the wealthy, they're the privileged. And you got the have-nots. That, you know, basically says it in their name. It's pretty much everybody else. They don't enjoy the pleasures of life that the haves do. And he said, this is baloney. And he, for this reason, he hated capitalism. So he wanted everyone to kind of get together overthrow the industrial um, employers. He wanted to get rid of this whole uh, segregated lifestyle as far as the social class system. And he wanted to get rid of poverty. He wanted everybody to um, have an equal share in things. The problem with this idea is that it doesn't really work because people uh, become prideful of their own work, they become prideful of their own nation, and 
you can't see this concept as a world view. And that's what Karl Marx wanted. He wanted the entire world to participate in this. And unfortunately, people become more loyal to their country rather than as a whole and working together. So communism wasn't really an idea that would... Okay, so overall, you might be wondering, well, what the heck's the difference between socialism and communism then? Well, here's some key differences. The first thing is socialism is simply an economic system where if you look at communism, it's both political and economic. The second main difference here is that within communism, the distribution of goods and services take place according to individual need, whereas in the socialist system, goods and services are distributed based on individual efforts, so like paying taxes. The last big difference is that in a socialist system, capitalism can exist. You can have some privately owned companies, but in communism, capitalism has no place. So these are just some core ideas. It doesn't mean that this actually happens and works. These are just ideas that could be mixed together and fused to have conversations about what government should look like. I hope this helped while I was able to talk to you guys individually about um, your essays. And that's it.